lower extremity exercise, we're gonna start from hip all the way down to the toes. It is important use appropriate table height. Rule of thumb for table height usage is like this. Whenever you are lifting heavier segments involving a lot of holding and strength and lifting, lower table, get closer to your patient or client, okay? That's like lifting heavy box away from it, it's gonna strain your lower back, right? Lifting his legs, same thing, having one knee on the table, to do that table must be on the lower position, so you can get closer to the heavy segments that you're trying to resist, okay? All right, so let's start with the hip. Hip flexion in supine position, demonstrate. Knee up to the chest, okay? And all you need to do, you're gonna resist them. Working hand here, resisting. I don't really have to stabilize above the hip joint because his upper body weight is stabilizing it. Supporting hand, just in case in the lower extremity. So you'll be supporting like this. Bring it up to chest, I'll give you resistance. Ready, go, bring it up. One, two, and three. You simply switch your hands back of their knee. I'm not gonna put my hands like this. So I would prefer using my forearm, pushing towards his chest, and he'll be pushing me down like this. So that'll be hip extension exercise. Ready, push down. One, two, and three. Yes, you may be able to use your wrist like this. Go ahead, push down. But this is not really comfortable in my shoulder and wrist, hyperextending my wrist like that. So that's why I'm locking my elbow, using my body weight, and he'll be literally pushing my upper body weight down. Okay, I'm not using much of my external rotation strength either. Okay, push down. One, two, and three. Okay, that's a hip extension, MRE. Frontal plane hip, A, B duction and A, deduction. Below the hip, working hand. Here, supporting hand. You'll be pushing out and pull in like this, okay? So abduction, go ahead, push out. One, two. I'm not giving any pressure or resistance with this hand because this is literally supporting hand. If you're pushing it here, you're giving too much valgus and varus stress in the knee. You don't want to damage their knee just to strengthen their hip muscles. So majority of my resistance or all of my resistance coming from this primary working hand. Ready, push out, okay? One, two, okay? Simply switching your hand inside, you'll be doing adduction, a deduction. One, two, and three, okay? That's how you do ABA deduction MRA in the hip. Hip rotation, similar manner as we did flexibility exercise. It's easier for me to roll in using my body weight, okay? So from externally rotated position, I'm gonna ask you to roll in, okay? Internal rotation of the hip. Ready, go. That's one, two, and three. Depending on your client's Leg length, you may be able to use hands over the other like this. One, that's a variation of hand placement. If they don't need a supporting hand, over left hand position is fine, okay? External rotation of the hip, you grab the further leg, the leg away from your body, and from internally rotated position, I'm gonna ask him to rotate out. Ready, so rotate out, one, two, and roll your hip out all the way, three, okay? That's how you do hip external rotation in supine position. Okay, moving down to the knee joint. Because I'll have to fight against strong quadriceps and hamstring. Whenever you are working against the big muscle, lower table position, get closer to your client. I like to have both knee propped up like this for number one, their comfortable lower back position can be enhanced by having knees up like this, okay? But also for knee exercise, we are trying to simulate seated leg extension and flexion. So imagine there's a virtual table underneath here. I'm gonna create a virtual table by putting my forearm underneath his working leg and putting my hands on the opposite knee like this. So that way he can do knee extension and then knee flexion, okay? 
So for knee extension from this position, I'm gonna ask him to kick up your foot towards the ceiling, okay? Ready, up, one, two, and three. So my arm muscle is not strong as his quadriceps. So best way to do this one is at least try to have half of your body on the top of the moving segments and then lock your elbow. So he'd be lifting my body weight up instead of resisting his quads using my arm strength. Okay, so let's do three more. One, two, and three. So that way I can use my body weight much more effectively. Knee flexion goes down like this from fully extended position to full flexion. And you may need to lower your forearm as they go down. Otherwise, this will happen. Go down. This is not full range. So to allow him to use full range of motion, you kind of dance with him. Ready? Literally kick your butt with your heels. Two and three. Okay, that's how to do hamstring curl in supine position. Okay, moving down to the ankle joint, please. The key here is feet off the table, right? Ankle off the table so you don't have to hold it up. Is it okay to take one shoe off or? Okay, cute socks, Stefan. <laughs> Well prepared for today's demonstration. Copying the heels, and they can do dorsiflexion from fully plantar flex position, plantar flex position to full dorsiflexion, and then from fully dorsiflex position down to plantar flexion. Okay, that's what we'll be doing. And table height, if you are sitting around the chest, is good. If you are standing, same thing. Around the chest will be comfortable for you. Ready? Push down. One, two, three, and four. Okay, that's plantar flexion. Switch my hands for dorsiflexion. Ready? One, two, three, four. Good. Then we do inversion, eversion, MRE. Goes like this, inversion and eversion. Well, split hand position is gonna be same as hip cupping the heel and working hand inside, he'll be turning his ankle inward as I'm resisting. Ready? One, two, and three. That's inversion. Eversion will be you putting your resisting hand out edge of the foot and from fully inverted position to full eversion. One, two, and three. Something that you need to avoid is doing this. One, two, you're not being isolating, you're not isolating their ankles, frontal plane motions. You're just mixing up their hip internal external rotation. So try to keep their toes towards ceiling as much as you can, okay? One, two, and three. Let's demonstrate incorrect versions. One, two, and three. Okay, that's incorrect version of E version MRE. I demonstrated sandwich grip for flexibility. Same thing, you can do the same sandwich grip from fully inverted position. You can ask them to evert out, tilt your ankle out. Okay, roll out, one, two, and three. Okay, now we're gonna do roll in this time, okay? Roll in, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's how you can do inversion MRI using sandwich grip, both hands in the middle, mid med tussles. Okay, last one. We have toes nicely lined up with this socks toe lines. Above that toe knuckle bones, the metal tussle heads, that'll be your stabular hand position. From fully flexed position, you'll be extending the toes. Ready, go. One, two, and three. And from fully extended position, we'll go for full flexion this time. Ready, one, two and three, that's toe flexion. Good? All right, that would be it for demonstrating lower extremity MRE. Thank you, Stefan.